And with more on what comes next, let's bring in John Decker, Fox News Radio White House correspondent and an attorney. Uh, John, always good to see you. Uh, good to see you, Eric. We had the report about the House uh, subpoenaing the full unredacted report. You think they'll get it? Well, it's going to be a court battle to get the unredacted report. After all, what's going to happen is that Bill Barr, the attorney general, will likely rebuff this request from the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, there may be a vote to uh, hold the attorney general in contempt, and then we're, we're headed for a court battle. Uh, what the attorney general has said, and he's right, uh, and that is that as far as grand jury material, Rule 6E of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure prevent the public dissemination of that grand jury material. There are exceptions, and in the past, actually, we've had examples in which uh, grand jury testimony has been seen by the public, namely, most recently in 1998 with the Starr Report. Ken Starr at the time, the independent counsel, what he did is he petitioned a federal judge to allow that grand jury material to be seen by Congress, and then Congress, in turn, Eric, voted to make the Starr Report available to the general public. Yeah, there can even be a private bill in the Senate and the House to, to release this uh, grand jury material. What are the chances that that will exactly happen, that a judge will decide, yes, that the American public, ha they have a right to see what these witnesses said, even though it was in the grand jury? There is that possibility if you get the right federal judge. This past week, uh, on a completely unrelated case, a federal judge appointed by George W. Bush, Reggie Walton, here in the District of Columbia, seemed to be leaning in that direction uh, when this issue came up regarding uh, the Mueller report and the redactions that were placed upon it. So it's quite possible that a federal judge may indeed side with uh, the Judiciary Committee Chairman, Jerry Nadler, on this particular issue. But we're a, a long way from that. And of course, even if a district court judge rules that way, Eric, it is likely to be challenged perhaps all the way up to the U.S. Supreme yeah, we Court. Could, so we could see this in the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, there are uh, other calls for investigations of how this whole thing started, uh, of the dossier, of the alleged FISA abuses. We know that the president has called for this, as well as other Republicans. Uh, Michael Horowitz, the IG of the DOJ, his report due uh, sometime in May, investigating that. And the attorney general has said they've started, he started, or will start, a task force on these potential abuses. What else do, will we likely will we see? Will there be an investigation on the scope of the Mueller report in dealing with those allegations on Christopher Steele and how this whole thing began? Well, as you mentioned, the IG is already looking into this particular matter to find out whether the, uh, the Steele dossier was relied upon for a FISA warrant, uh, which looked into a campaign aid of President Trump during the presidential campaign. In addition to that, Eric, you also have uh, what we've seen from Lindsey Graham. He's the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. He's indicated that he wants to look into this as well, and he has the power to do so. So I, I would not be surprised if Lindsey Graham uh, uses his authority as the Senate Judiciary Committee chairman to look into this matter alongside what the IG is already doing. Yeah, and Senator Graham has raised lots of questions. John mm -hmm. Solomon the Hill uh, has listed a whole bunch of them. Let me give you a couple of highlights mm -hmm. of what he says. I, 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 read along with me, everybody, if you can. <laughs> when did the FBI first learn that the Steele's dossier was funded by the Clinton campaign and the Democratic Party and written by a partisan who, by his own admission, was desperate to defeat Trump? Why was the Steele dossier used as primary evidence in the FISA warrant against Page when it had not been corroborated? Why were Steele's biases and his ties to the Clinton campaign never disclosed to the FISA court as required by law and, and court practice? And finally, did the CIA, FBI, or Obama administration use or encourage friendly spy agencies in Great Britain, Australia, Ukraine, Italy, or elsewhere to gather evidence on the Trump campaign, leak evidence, or get around U.S. restrictions on spying on Americans? You would think those are the questions that are going to be asked in any uh, Lindsey Graham chaired hearing. Do you think we will get any of those answers? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. It depends who the witnesses are. For, for instance, if Christopher Steele is uh, brought before the committee, perhaps we'll get those answers. Perhaps he'll plead the Fifth Amendment. Well, we don't know that, Eric, but it's quite clear that based upon what you've just read, Lindsey Graham most certainly is leaning in this direction, and he's getting a lot of pressure to have this kind of investigation being conducted by the Senate Judiciary Committee. And we already see there are other Republicans who sit on that committee as well, Eric, who would like Lindsey Graham to pursue this effort to find out all of those uh, answers to the questions that Lindsey Graham has raised. Yeah, three, at least three investigations, if not more than, uh, on the beginnings of Carter Page. 
uh, as we shall see, so this is not over. John Decker, uh, White House correspondent for Fox News. John, always good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Good to us. see you, Eric. Thanks of a course. lot.